Now we might as well draw the newel posts and everything else while we're here. So I'll do a rectangle starting from the top of my landing. Newel posts are three and a half inches wide by 42 inches high. Try that again because I didn't do the at symbol. Again. Okay, rectangle at 3.5 comma 42. So there would be one newel post. And I'm going to copy that newel post from one end of the landing to the other. Okay, so there's my other newel post. And we won't worry about the railing right now, we'll get to that in a bit. What I want to focus on now is actually doing the stairs themselves. Alright, so now that we know the actual height of our landing, we can calculate that. We can put a, throw a dimension on there from our, to grade. We can see it's 9 foot 3. I think that's very similar to what we had determined before. 9 foot 3. So we're going to do our calculations based on 9 foot 3. So let me just show you the, the uh, calculations that we're going to do here. So 9 foot 3, if we convert that into um, millimeters, what do we get? So that's 111 inches. We're going to multiply that by 25.4. Yeah, so 2819.4 millimeters, right? Okay, 2819.4 millimeters. We're going to divide that by 200. And that's going to give us, because 200 is in the maximum rise, remember, 14.097 which we are going to convert to oops, to 15 risers. So if we take 2819.4 divided by 15, that gives us an actual rise of 188. We're going to just round it to the nearest millimeter, so 188 millimeters. So there's the calculations that went into that. I'm just leaving them on the screen there so we can see them a little bit more. So that's the actual rise, 188 millimeters. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to convert that back into inches. So we take 188, divide by 25.4, 7.4 inches. All right, so starting from the very top corner of our landing, I'm going to start drawing some lines here now. So I'm going to draw a line that comes out an inch, down an inch, that represents the nosing that would be at the top, and then back an inch. So that's the little nosing that we would have for the very top of the landing. You need to have that in there. And now I'm going to draw another line that represents the overall height of those risers. So that's going to be 7.4 inches. All right, so let me just draw it back here. Now, if you remember the uh, the depth here, the depth of our um, risers needs to be 235 millimeters, which is nine and a quarter. So we're going to go 9.25 inches from the front nosing. That's going to represent the other nosing. So this gets a little tricky to draw, but uh, that line here represents the other nosing. So I'm just going to camfer that now. You can for this to oops, actually delete this line. Okay, now I'm going to actually um, offset that one inch. That represents the tread. Cam for that. So let me. I'll explain uh, the what we've done here in a second. And now I'm going to draw a line from base point here at negative one comma zero. And the overall height here is going to be 7.4 inches. All right, so what I've done is I've essentially just created a sample riser for myself. I'm going to actually save this whole thing as a block. And I'm going to call this um, Steps Rear. The base point that I'm going to use is going to be the back of the riser. You can use a different base point, doesn't really matter. And now I'm going to copy that 
all the way down. Until I get to the ground. Now if I've done it properly, I should end up landing perfectly on the bottom. Which, whoops, one more. I do. So you should end up right at the bottom of the grade line if you've done it right. And if you count your risers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, the landing is the 15th riser, everything works out exactly the way that we had hoped it would. Now I don't, uh, I don't necessarily like the look of these, that these are going to get hidden behind the stringer. So the reason I created it as a block is so I can edit it later. So I'm going to actually edit the block in place. Come on AutoCAD, there we go. And I'm going to trim out some of these lines. So I don't want to see actual the tread line, so I'm going to do a, a camphor here. Get rid of this, this line, so I just see that. I'm actually going to make all of these lines, I'm going to make them hidden lines. Or hidden two, we'll use hidden two. So now if I save changes, you'll notice that all of them have updated to hidden two. All right, now for the stringer. Actually, sorry, now let's copy it down a, um, a newel post. So I'm going to make a copy of a newel post. I'm going to copy the bottom left corner of the newel post, and I'm going to place that right against the, the uh, stringer here, or right against the edge of the stairs. I might even move it out a little bit, actually. Let's move it so that it's lined up somewhat over top of that, uh, that bottom there. It doesn't have to be exact, just close. It doesn't have to be exact. They'll, when they build it on site, they'll, they'll uh, fine-tune it. Now what I want to do is I want to actually draw in the stringer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line that's going to be coming out from the top of the landing. And let's just say, um, I don't know, three inches. Let's come out three inches. I'm going to draw another line that connects my nosings. And I'm going to copy that line or move that line up to that, the end of that three inch line that I just created. That's going to be the line of the top of the stringer. Or top, yeah, top of the stringer. So if I extend that line all the way down to the bottom, okay, we're going to bring it somewhere down there. Now the stringers that we're going to use are probably going to be either 2x10 or 2x12 stringers. The actual size of those, uh, we use 2x10, let's uh, go 9.25. So I'm going to offset that line, this line, this top line here, 9.25 inches. That represents the thickness of a string. Let's see if this works. There are certain codes around um, the thicknesses of, of what the stringers need to be. I think that might be a little too shallow. Uh, so I'm actually going to change that to um, 11.25. So we're going to use 2 by 12 stringers here. That's a little bit better, a little bit more beefy. Because uh, it is a fairly long distance, a long span, I think 2 by 12 would work a little bit better. And I'm just going to uh, cut these back, draw a little detail in here, up to the bottom of the landing. And away we go. There's our stringer. The stringer will uh, actually um, stop at the bottom. I'm going to continue on a little ways here. We're going to draw this line down. It sort of gets all cut off and all modified. And, and we're just drawing something fairly close. We don't, it doesn't have to be exact. And I might actually move this now to connect with the end of the stringer. Something like that. And if I want to, I could actually move these. So let's see how far I would need to move it here. Let's say uh, if we drop a line down to see how far we need to go. We need to make any adjustments that we make in the, um, the elevations. We need to reflect it on the main floor and the foundation plans as well. So if I move that line over, see what the new dimension is. From the center to the edge, four foot two and a half. I'm going to go back to my foundation plan. It's a block. I'm going to edit the block in place. And I'm going to stretch this. Two and a half inches. I think that worked. So now that's updated. It's been reflected. Okay, and the last thing is the um, <clears throat> looking at the railings. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. It's not too bad. So I'm just going to draw 
the top rail and the bottom rail here. So that it doesn't really matter the length of it, we're going to adjust it anyways, but the height of it is going to be an inch and a half. So let's just make this 60 inches by 1.5 inches high. Whoops. Try that again. At 60 comma 1.5. And the location where it's going to be placed is going to be 36 inches from the top of the landing. So I'm going to draw a little line here in the corner. I'm going to go up 36 inches. I'll just draw it back here just so we can have a place to, to connect this to. And that represents the top corner of that top rail. So I'll delete that rail, delete that guideline. So I've just positioned that now 36 inches from the top of the landing, three feet. And now I'm just going to extend this. To the other newel posts. So it goes between the newel posts. And I'm going to copy this and it needs to go four inches from the top of the landing. Remember we can't have any dimension that is greater than four inches. Otherwise a baby's head could fit through it, baby could fall and die and it'd be all your fault. You'd be responsible for killing a baby and you don't want to be responsible for that. So we have four inches that's going to be from the from the uh, landing to the underside of that uh, top rail. And now I'm going to draw a spindle. Spindles are really easy. If I was smart, I would have figured out what the actual dimension was, but let's just draw it 32 inches long for now, and we'll move it up. It fits between the top rail and the bottom rail. Let's make sure that is the yeah, that's the bottom rail. It gets a little confusing. There's a lot of lines in here. We're going to have to do some trimming. And now I'm going to move this out, <clears throat> and we're going to move it uh, four inches out. Let's double check to make sure we have no more than four inches between the newel and our first spindle. And now I'm going to make a copy of this spindle, and I'm going to copy it using this as a reference point. I'm basically going to copy all the way across like this. Make sure that you don't have any space greater than four inches. The other thing we can do just to neaten this up a little bit is we can actually um, center this. So if I knew what the distance was here, this is just a bit of a presentation thing. And I know the distance here, inch and a half and four inches. So the difference is two and a half inches. If I split that in half, um, 1.25, let's see if that helps, yeah, I think that worked. Just to, to kind of even out the space. So we have two and three quarters, two and three quarters, perfect. And now I'm going to do some trimming. So we want to trim out wherever you have the, um, the door frame. This gets a little cumbersome. Come on. It doesn't want to trim that all because it's not a never mind. Actually, I think we'll probably be deleting that line anyways, but so some lines you will still see and some you will not. And now we're going to do the same thing over here, except this one is going to be even a little bit trickier. So what I'm going to do is draw a line just straight through. I'm going to, I'm going to bring that line out three inches, just like I did at the bottom. I'll draw another line that comes out to the same point. Just shorten these back because they would be connected to the newel post. Delete this one. So this is going to represent the top of the railing that comes through the top now. Now the railing should be connected 36 inches high here as well, right? So I'm going to draw a line up 36 inches, and that's going to be the point that I want to connect to. Now I can actually just connect the top like so. Now I don't know if that slope doesn't quite look right to me. Um, what I'm going to do is actually copy this because I want to have the same slope, the same angle. That just means that my newel post has to move further away. 
in order to achieve that. So I was probably a little premature in actually um, doing all that work before, but uh, let's see here. Whoops, actually, that's the the height we need that to be at. So let's just do a still 36. Yeah, it's 36. How are we going to do that here? I want these to line up. Might have to just sort of fudge it a little bit here. Yeah, let's try that. Okay, now I'm going to offset inch and a half to my top rail. And if I knew the distance here from that bottom rail, I can do the I can offset for the bottom rail. So let's figure out what the offset should be. Two foot five. Okay, so let's offset twenty-nine inches down. And that's too low, isn't it? Is that right? Let's double check that again from here to here, two foot five. Yeah, it should be twenty nine inches. Oh, that's okay, never mind. Duh. That's where we want to be right here. Okay, so now I can actually copy this. Let's copy it from the top. I'm sorry, from the Okay, let's copy one line at a time. That was just a sample guideline that we used. Draw a line straight out, cam for that. And offset 1.5. Alright, so something like that. And now you can take your spindle position your first one. Now for this one here we might actually want to uh, create a block. We'll call this uh, spindle angled. I'll choose the intersection here as the base point. And it's going to edit the block in place. What I'm going to do is just match it to the slope. Like so. And now I can copy that. The trick, however, is copying at the right angle. Yeah, so let's go uh, 5.5. All right, so and then we'll just move this down. We've got to get the first one lined up first, and then we can do the rest of them. There we go. Okay. And so now if I check, double check the, the distance here, make sure I don't have more than four inches. Okay, good. And now I can copy. Here to here, here, oops, here, doesn't quite look like it's on, no, I guess those are lines are lined up. Yikes, it's getting messy.
You guys can figure that out, right? Something like that. All right, so remember we have the uh, the belly band. So the belly band will actually um, probably be in the same location as we have that uh, floor system right now. We use that as a belly band. Um, we've got our corner boards, the trim in the corners. Um, so really, we're at this point now, in terms of the rear, ele rear elevation and the front elevation, we're sort of at the adding detail stage. Um, so I'm going to let you guys deal with that. We might do a little bit of that in another video, um, just so you can kind of see uh, how it works, but it, I won't be talking. It'll probably be a sped up video. I can work on that and I can record myself doing that. Uh, the next thing we want to work on is the left and right elevations, just massing those up for you. So now we'll look at the left and the right elevations. So because we've made a copy of our blocks, it's going to be really easy. We'll just do the, um, maybe the right elevation would be the best one to do. No, let's do the left one. It's got the most amount of windows. Um, oh no, we'll do the, we'll do the right one because we can show maybe a bit of the stairs too. All right, so what we're going to do with these is we're actually going to uh, get rid of all the, the uh, lines. We can always recreate these lines if we need to, right, because they're just X lines. And let's rotate these now 90 degrees. And by rotating them, it will give us the ability to, um, to look at, I want to make sure we get the right elevation here, the proper elevation. So that's going to be the, that's the left elevation. So I shouldn't have rotated it that way. You've got to rotate it the other way. We want the right elevation. So we want the right elevation to be facing down below, facing us. Yeah, that's about the, that's the, oh, I did it again. That's the left elevation. Never mind. I'll get it right. One of these times. Let's go. What's that? Oh, it's not. Oh, sorry. There we go. <laughs> okay, and let's do the same thing here. Rotate this. And the same thing with this one. All right, so we should have the right elevation facing us now on all three plans. I'm just going to line it up to the, really it doesn't matter to line it up because we're just going to be dropping down guidelines anyways, but I like to keep everything in line just so I can, I don't know, in particular that way. Okay, so let's choose these as our main layer. Let's create an X-line. This is going to be a vertical X-line. You snap to all the uh, corners first. We'll add more detail as we need it. Let's move this out of the way so that we don't interfere with it. You're going to eventually reorient all these um, elevations, anyways. All the, they're all going to end up in. The, um, they're all going to end up organized in your layout somewhere in your model space. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, we have our levels. If you need a copy of those levels, you can always copy them over. If you uh, are unfamiliar as to which, which one's which, you can always make a copy. So we'll copy from here over to here so we have something to reference. All right, so here's top of footing. Um, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, uh, because I've already got the grade line and the foundation plan, I'm actually going to copy that and just stretch the components over. I think that'll uh, make it a little bit easier for myself. So let's copy from here to here. And then I'm just going to use the stretch command, because essentially it's the same elements that are just copied from one to the other. Right? We still have our grade line, we still have our 8 inch foundation, but now it saves me the, the hassle of having to go through and uh, change all the lines again, trim everything out. It right? just makes it a little bit easier from this point. I could also do the same with the, um, the main floor, or sorry, the garage floor level. You know, I can do the same for these levels as well. Just copy from corner to corner, and then I'm just going to stretch it. The only thing to keep in mind is we extend one inch past the foundation line. 
for anything that has siding. So just make that adjustment. So there's my levels. Now we know what the top of the roof is because we did our front elevation first. We know what the top of the roof is. We can now actually just uh, draw a massing for the roof. Now keep in mind that that roof has an overhang and we do have some overhangs here. So what I might do is I might actually take this bottom part here and I might actually move it down to the underside of that roof. Okay, That's where that uh, eave is going to be. So if we look at the lines of the roof, we'll have that line there. We will have the top of the fascia, so the bottom of the subfascia, the top of the subfascia, and the peak of the roof. Those are the three lines that we're going to see on the elevation view for the left and the right elevations. So we can actually draw those lines in. Now I might move this line down just because I'm going to need that anyways. And then I'll draw another rectangle. I'll do the rectangle from here to here. Oops, I did the wrong layer. Make the current layer detail. Now the extension for the roof is actually going to be 16 inches on all sides. So we're going to actually extend this 16 inches out the back, 16 inches for front and back, and we'll do a rectangle. It's going to be 16 inches out this way. Oh, plus one. So there's the massing for the elevation. That's the right elevation. So if that was the right elevation, that means that uh, this is the front and this is the rear. Now the only thing that we're going to see on the rear in terms of the foundation level is we'll see those brackets. We'll have to draw the brackets below grade at the foundation level. What I might do is I might actually move this out or you know what I'll do is I'll change the angle of it slightly maybe make it a bit longer like so and now I'm going to draw in a bracket so we'll start with a rectangle I always like to start with rectangles let's make that um, 36 inches long and we did 24 inches high right and now I'm going to draw a line and it's going to go down, say, about 8 inches, connect it to the back, and then I'm just going to trim this off. Whoops. Like so. So that's kind of what a bracket would look like. It does, this is an arbitrary amount. It doesn't really matter. I mean, wh whatever the specific um, bracket manufacturer has for that, that's what we're going to be using. And that will connect to a point maybe just a little bit below, a little bit below the grade. Okay, the height will be based on actual grade. We want it to just be a little bit below, so it's not poking above the grade. Maybe even connect it so that it's oops, you know perpendicular to the grade there, something like that. And these will all be hidden lines as well. So we're going to change that to a hidden detail hide. No, it doesn't really matter. I mean, well, the foundation wall is five feet high, right? Foundation wall is five feet high. This has to be below grade. Yeah. Or just below grade. You will have to. You have to show it sloping down in a way. Um, but this is just an arbitrary value here. So, yeah, it doesn't really matter. All right, so now we're going to move on from the, uh, the foundation plan. We're going to move this over. Now we're into the main floor plan. And we don't have any windows on the side here. The only thing I'm interested in is these columns. So I will draw a line, copy it over for our columns. So this is going to be the center of the columns. I already drew my column here, so I can actually take my column from here and I'll just copy it. Midpoint, bring it over and place it on top of that precast bracket. And that will also help us with our landing as well. So I've already got my landing drawn. I might as well just copy my landing. So let's copy that over. And I'll copy it from 
Yeah, I'll just copy it from the edge here. We will adjust it. Why does that not seem the right height here? Oh, because we moved it down, that's why. So this column will actually be right there. So something like that. And uh, might as well copy all the elements, the new post. Save ourselves having to draw everything all again, right? Now remember we have a half new post against the wall. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to actually shrink it down half of 3.5, which is 1.75. That would be my half new post. I might as well grab a copy of my top rail, maybe a few spindles. So let me grab about three or four spindles. Try not to grab any of the... Um, extra stuff we don't need. Top rail, bottom rail. Might as well copy that over. Let me copy it from the edge of that spindle there to that one there. And then I'll just modify it. And then maybe copy another spindle or two across so we have enough spindles to cover that space. There we go. So something like that. And then you'll have to draw, you know, the back of the stairs going down. I wouldn't actually worry about that too much um, because it's, you know, we kind of have what is called the fog of elevation. So they're going to be really light lines anyway. So I wouldn't even worry about drawing the stairs in this view. But when we get to the other view where you're actually seeing the stairs from the front, I want you to draw each of those risers in. So what I would do is I would actually um, position your elevation to this side here and draw some construction lines that represent each of the risers. And then each of the nosings as well. So you're going to draw a construction line. Do an X line. Horizontal. You're going to connect one here, one here. That's going to be, do that for each one of those risers going all the way down. And then all you got to do is just trim it. Okay? So you will need to show the front risers, but don't show the back. Don't worry about the back. Okay? I won't, won't ask you guys to do that. Um, now the only other thing we need is in terms of massing, and really we're getting into details here now, is we, uh, we're going to copy this over to where we have our main floor. And we're now going to include the windows. So just like we did on previous massings, is we're going to do the windows. Oh, did it again. Now keep in mind here that we actually, um, okay, so for our massing, you see I made a mistake, and it's a good thing that I actually did copy it over here, um, because if you look at the way this is lined up, and some of you probably caught this before I did, this is the alignment that we have if we look at the back, but the front, remember the roof or the, uh, the main floor is actually set back three feet. So that means I have to move all of this back three feet. I have to move this 36 inches. I have to move this 36 inches. I'm going to move my roof. I'm going to use the stretch command for this one. Because our roof is actually on the main floor, it's set back. So this is going to be, now we're going to be using these lines to help, help us create the roof that's over top of the garage. So here's the top of the walls. We have the same roof system as we do on the main floor. We have the same pitch, same roof system, everything like that. So I'm going to actually copy that. And I'll copy it from the alignment point at the top. And I'll place it at the corner right there. And now if we've done this properly, if we copy this over to where the uh, front, that's pretty close. It's not exact, but it's close. And we'll use a trim command. And we'll just trim back that roof line to the front wall. Okay, so we just basically lined up our, our roof for our garage. So remember, three feet back for the main floor from the garage level. So it's a good thing we checked. It's a good thing we, we positioned it underneath. Otherwise, we wouldn't have noticed that, right? Well, you guys might have, but I wouldn't have. 
All right, our alignment point, 84 inches. That's where our windows are going to be. Rectangles for the windows. And I believe that these windows are 24 or 30 by... These are on the right side. Yeah, 30 by... Um, actually, they should be 24 by 48, right? Yeah, 24, okay. Twenty-four comma make it forty-eight. Twenty-four by forty-eight and copy that over. There you go. All right. So the um, the other of the uh, this is the right elevation, the left elevation. I think you guys get the idea in terms of massing. It's going to be very much the same. What I'd like to do is show you a little more detail, say around the windows, show you what's going on with the windows, and maybe um, a little bit with the uh, the roof lines for the front and the rear elevation, and then the rest will sort of be, um, you know, you guys can kind of work on that on your own. So let's focus in on a window, for example. We want to do some details on the window. So what we're going to do is we're going to offset the frame an inch and a half. That's going to represent the inside of the frame. So we're going to offset inch and a half to the inside. And then we're going to offset again. I'm going to use that same offset, inch and a half. This is going to represent the sashes. Now the sashes aren't going to, go, to look like that. We actually need to draw a line. I'm going to draw a line from the midpoint of one part of the frame to the midpoint of the other. I'm going to offset 0.75 inches. This is going to represent the sash. Delete the middle line. And now I can do some camphering here. So this line will actually camphor with this one. Oops, I shouldn't have deleted all that. Let me try trimming first. Yeah. That's essentially what our window is going to look like. So here's the upper sash, and here's the lower sash. And then our glazing would be in between. So that's a really quick and easy way to do the window. Now the, uh, the lines for the windows are going to be a little different. So the frame is going to be actually using, um, what do we say that was going to be... All right, so we want to draw some thin, we want to change these lines, our sash lines, to thin lines. So A detail, L, L, I, N. So they're going to be a little bit thinner. And uh, now what I want to do actually is I want to create the trim around the windows. So again, we would use a normal line type. I'm going to use rectangles. So I'm actually going to draw a rectangle here. It's going to be at, now the height of our window was uh, 48 inches, so I'm going to go 6 inches over, comma, 48 in inches high. That's going to represent the, the uh, trim at the side of the window. I'm going to copy that to the other side, because the trim is on both sides. Now I'm going to do another rectangle. I'm going to do the header. So I'm just going to draw a line from here, and uh, if I add this up correctly, we should be at uh, 2436, comma, 6. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually extend this out two inches to create a little bit of an overhang on the sides of the window. So we want the, the header to be extended out over top of the main trim, about uh, two inches. And I'm going to grab that handle and I'm going to extend this handle out another two inches just to kind of create a little bit of a, a little bit of a detail on top. So I extend those out two inches to kind of create little like wings almost at the top there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another rectangle down below. I'm going to make that 36 by negative 6. I'm going to move it down 2 inches. Create another rectangle inside. And that's going to represent the sill. And the sill is going to extend out 2 inches on either side as well. And there we have typical window trim. Really easy. So for the windows that are joined together like this, you're going to copy all these components. They're all going to be the same components, except they might be different sizes. So we're just going to copy from one corner of the window to the other one. Except now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move some of these. So I'm going to move this piece to the other side of the window. And now I'm going to, I'm going to stretch the header. Stretch it a little bit more even. I'll move it two inches this way, two inches this way. And I'll do the same thing with this one here. I'll stretch it. 
like so. So the, the trim that goes between the windows, we're not going to actually put any lines there. It would actually be a solid piece of trim that would exist between those windows. Um, once we have this window, you might actually want to even create a block. Some of these windows are actually repeated multiple times. So you could actually, uh, oops, not that one. You could actually create one window and then just save it as a block. That's probably the best thing to do and then just insert that block in those locations. But uh, just for the purposes of finishing this elevation somewhat, I'm just going to make a copy of it here. The last thing I'll show you is the, um, the muntins and mullions. So these ones are going to be using really, really thin lines. Now that's the new layer that we created. And that one was called T-Line, so that's extremely thin line. So I'm going to change over to that. I'm going to draw a line <clears throat> at the center. We're just going to put muntins and mullions in the top. So I'm going to draw a line, just cut sort of a cross pattern from one side to the other. And I'm going to use my divide command. I'm going to divide that object into three. And same with the object at the top. I'm going to divide it into three as well. So then we create that nine by nine pattern. Now if I delete those lines, you'll see, well, you probably can't see them, but uh, I've got some... Um, some guidelines here now that I've created. So now what I can do is I can actually just plan out where I want my grids to be. Now I know that's a color you probably can't see on the big screen, but that's sort of the window grid pattern. I'm going to do now an offset, and the offset is going to be 3 eighths of an inch, 0.375. Because we want those window grids to be three quarters of an inch thick, and half of three quarters is three eighths. So I'm just going to offset to either side. I would recommend just doing one of these, and then deleting, or then making it a block and, and uh, including it in the block in your window. And now I'm just going to trim out. We don't want to show any crisscross patterns. I'm just going to trim out all the insides. Like so. So now save that into your block. And when it prints, it'll look really nice. And doors, just, um, you know, just kind of create a simple door style. Uh, the roof, so what we're going to do with the roof, the fascia is actually going to be an 8 inch fascia, so we're going to offset that 8 inches. And we're going to do some camphering now. We're going to actually camphor this with that, which means we'll end up deleting some lines. That with that. Just want to clean it up a little bit here. Okay, we're not going to see this on the, um, the elevation. We won't see any of this on the elevation. That's sort of hidden in behind. So we can just sort of clean this up. Those are just there for the purposes of planning. Okay, so there's our 8-inch fascia. We can now start cleaning up the, um, the elevations a little bit. Last thing we'll do before we go is I'll show you one of the uh, sample gable ends. All right, so again, using um, now this one here, we're going to be using thin lines, but not the ultra thin lines, not yet, anyways. So we're going to be using, uh, I believe, they're light lines. Let me just double check with our master line scheme here. And yeah, those are going to be using thin lines. So uh, where are we here? Yeah, light lines. L L I N. Or sorry, trim is going to be using the the um, any trim work is that line there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a line, and I'm just going to pick a point. It has, it's arbitrary. I can't really tell because the screen is all flattened. I can't tell if that's in proportion or not. But you just want to make it look nice. Just you know, it doesn't have to be a certain dimension or anything like that. Just get it to look nice. Trim it back. You're going to offset that 10 inches up. You're going to offset that again, two inches, or sorry, one inch, or sorry, two inches, yeah, two inches. 
If that didn't work. Actually, I believe it's one. Sorry, my mistake. One inch. And then we'll add in one of those brackets. So those brackets were 24 inches high and three and a half inches wide, so 3.5 3 by 24. We had a little block at the top, which was three and a half by three and a half. And then we had another line in here. Um, which is inch and a half wide, so let's go, uh, I don't know, let's just position it in there and we'll move it around as we need to. It goes in the very center. Uh, I just made that 14 inches high, but you know, it, it'll all depend. You might want to draw uh, one on the side first, just to kind of get your, your dimensions figured out. And then we're going to put a um, crisscross pattern in the top here. We're going to save this as a block, obviously, because we're going to be using it again. And we're going to create a little bit of an angled design. So I'm just going to come down maybe about an inch. Go back to the corners. Delete that line in the center. Okay, kind of create a point. So this, this right here and that, right there, those are all the same. Create this as a block. Let's call this uh, bracket. And this is a front view, so this is going to be a front view of the bracket. Our base point is going to be the very center, right here. And now I can actually take that and I can position it right up in here. And I want to trim out the gable end around it. Trim out the fascia. So it looks like it's inset in there a little bit. Now you see that those lines actually weren't drawn far enough down, so I'll have to actually move them. Like so. Fix that up a little bit, and we're going to make a copy of this. Let's copy it from here to, yeah, maybe right there. I think I like that. So it should all line up. Use the trim command again, trim out all the details that you wouldn't see because the bracket would be in the way. Yeah, something like that. Oops. And then you're just going to put some hatching in and you'll put those little blocks in as well. So those little blocks are actually using the lighter line. Those are going to be the, uh, the light lines. And those ones are just simple uh, three and a half by three and a half blocks. And we've got the line crisscrossing through them. What should we call these? Maybe um, let's call these block detail blocks. I'll position one in the center. And then just copy them across. You get the idea. We just want to copy them equally across. I, mean, you know, I don't know what the spacing would be. Um, what do we have for total spacing here? We've got five feet. Okay, so if we move one at uh, two and a half feet. Both sides. And maybe split the distance. Maybe add another one and another one on either side. You guys, I think you guys get the idea. Alright, so be smart. Use blocks a lot.
Okay, every window should be a block. Every trim around, you know, trim around the windows. I mean, you can keep those as rectangles if you want because they're, they're obviously a lot of variation. But each window, the window grids, mullions, things like that, have them all as blocks. Save these as blocks. Save these as blocks. Really, everything, the spindles should be, you know, blocks for the most part, right? Even the newel posts can be blocks. I know I've, for the sake of time, I haven't really spent a lot of time creating blocks like that, but I would recommend doing that. And that way it'll make it a lot easier. If I come back to you and say, your spindles are wrong, they're too thin or they're too thick, it's a really easy change. You can just go in and you can just modify one and everywhere, every one of them is going to update. Okay, so be smart. Um, one of the things about AutoCAD, of, you know, when you're drawing, I know some of you just want to get it over and done with and you don't want to have to deal with it anymore. And so you skip over the block creation parts. But keep in mind that you, if you ever have to go back and edit things, if you don't have it saved as blocks, your work is now exponential. You've now created a lot more work for yourself. Um, one more thing I want to show you, and that is just regarding the profile lines. So when we're talking about the elements that are coming towards us, remember we talked about those lines that are going to be very heavy lines, but the elements that are coming towards us. Now we talked about, I believe, thick number two is going to be the uh, lines that are coming towards us. So that's M line, M-L-I-N. I just changed that layer here. When we go to the elevation, the rear elevation is a good example because we have these stairs. And these stairs are actually projecting towards us from the viewing plane. So I actually want to create a P-line that surrounds anything that projects towards us. So I'm going to start at the bottom left-hand corner. I'm going to go all the way up the column, around the landing, around the newel post, top rail. You don't have to get carried away. You don't have to go around each spindle, but just the majority here, just the major elements. You're going to trace an outline around any part that is actually sticking towards us or coming towards us. Now here I might, uh, see I want to get an intersection between this point here and this point here. Okay, this would actually be projected towards us. and C for close. So now we have a polyline that surrounds the entire object of the profile of the items that's, that uh, stick out towards us from the viewing plane. Like I said, don't get carried away. We're just wanting to identify to the viewer that that object, gives it, give it a sense of scale, is projecting towards us. Same thing with the garage elevation. We'll do that one for you as well since we're on the same layer. If you use a P-line, it'll make it really easy. We're going to outline, starting from grade, because grade is, you know, yeah, it's projecting towards us. Now, once we have our, our roof drawn in the front elevation, this will be a little bit easier, but uh, I think you guys get the idea. You have to draw the, you have to go back to the front elevation and draw the roof. C for close. So that's going to be the elements that stick out towards us. Now that you have your left elevation drawn, you know what levels to put on your front elevation. You know which level that the intersection of the roof is to the walls. You know how far down the subfascia comes, the top of the subfascia and the bottom. You can transfer those lines to your front elevation and start erasing some of these lines in here. And then you can do your profile. Your profile is going to go around the roof, all the way around. Thanks, guys.